for j greater than equal to 2 we denote by omega j x this is the j exterior power of uh, exterior product uh, or wedge product of omega 1 x with itself itself okay so a connection uh, nebula on e uh, this can be extended to a cylinder who of the sheaves of abelian groups from omega j uh, x tensor with e to omega j plus 1 uh, tensor with uh, e by setting nebula nebula j of omega tensor s is equal to d omega plus uh, d omega tensor with s plus minus 1 whole to the power j uh, times omega wedge product with uh, nebula s okay for where the uh, where omega the small omega is the section of omega uh, to the power j x and uh, and s is the whole section of the shift e okay so uh, in this so we can extend the notion and uh, we demand this nebula j to be c linear homomorphism of shifts then uh, if we compose nebula one with nebula then this compose may have to turns out to be OX linear homomorphism. And this is generally denoted by K suffix nebula. This is called curvature of this connection. Okay. A connection nebula uh, on E is said to be flat or integrable connection. If its curvature vanishes identically. Okay. Then it's called flat connection. So generally, uh, in a uh, in the most of the talk, we will focus only uh, the cases when E is uh, uh, just locally free cohesive, that means vector bundle, or mainly holomorphic vector bundle. And uh, we extend this notion of connection to the case of principal bundles also. Okay. So, a well known theorem of Akia uh, is the following this is actually first proved by Well, and then Akia gave an algebraic proof. So, this theorem gives a necessary and sufficient condition for existence of a holomorphic or algebraic connection on a given vector bundle on a compact Riemann surface. So suppose X is a complex positive curve or equivalently this is a compact Riemann, sur compact Riemann surface and let E be a holomorphic vector bundle on X. Okay. Then the theorem says that E admits a holomorphic connection or algebraic connection if and only if degree of each of indecomposable uh, direct summand of this vector bundle E is zero. So degree is basically a topological uh, invariant. This is defined by first chan class okay, of this vector bundle. So this is a quite well-known result, uh, classical result. Now the question is, so clearly this theorem says that there are certain topological obstruction given by chan class. Uh, so not uh, every uh, holomorphic vector bundle can have first and plus zero. So there is a question, uh, uh, what can we expect? Uh, maybe can we expect some kind of uh, connection, which is holomorphic away from a divisor and its singularities are quite controlled in a, in a sense that it has a pole of order one at most. So such a connection is, will be called logarithmic connection. We'll come to that part a little later. Okay. Now this theorem uh, is uh, for dimension one when X is a curve. Okay. And then in the same paper in 1957 paper, Atiya uh, give another result. <coughs> he has proved another result that uh, when X is a co uh, connected compact killer manifold of complex dimension greater than equal to three, then given any holomorphic vector bundle E on X, this vector bundle E admits a holomorphic connection if and only for sufficiently large degree hypersurface Z in X, the restriction of this vector bundle on this hypersurface admits a holomorphic connection. So this theorem works uh, for dimension greater than dimension of X greater than equal to three. For surface case, so dimension two, Atiya gave a, Atiya has given a counter example. Uh, so that uh, this restriction theorem for holomorphic connection fails in surface in general. Okay, so so it is a naturally interesting question. Uh, what uh, can we expect in the case X is surface? So that is, uh, I think that is quite a uh, uh, difficult question and maybe uh, not yet done by anyone. What is the necessary and sufficient condition for existence of a holomorphic connection on a vector bundle defined on smooth complex uh, projective surface? 
Okay. So that's an interesting question. So this Atiyas result. Uh, okay. So now let me come to the uh, case of uh, the connection, which are not holomorphic, uh, which are basically holomorphic away from a divisor. So for the rest of the talks, let us fix the following notation. Let D be a simple normal cosine divisor on X. So by this, I mean that this is a reduce, reduced effective divisor so that each of its irreducible components are smooth and they intersect each other transversely. Okay. And let us denote by omega 1 x log d the shift of uh, meromorphic one forms on x with at most logarithmic poles along d. Okay. So this is called logarithmic cotangent bundle on x. Now a logarithmic connection on a shift e, a quasi coin shift e singular along the divisor D. This is basically a C-linear homomorphism of shift of abelian groups, nebula, from uh, E to omega 1 x uh, log D tensor with E over a OX, such so that this should satisfy the Leibniz rule. Nebula of F, F times S equal to DF tensor S plus F times nebula S, where F is a locally defined holomorphic functions on X, and S is locally defined uh, holomorphic sec uh, section of uh, the quasi coin shift E. Okay. So this is the notion of logarithmic connection. Uh, I think uh, this uh, notion of logarithmic connection was first introduced uh, by Delin in his book, uh, uh, Differential Equation book written in French. Okay. So, so there is a notion of residue for a logarithmic connection. Let me uh, define this. Suppose Z1, Z2, Zn, this is a holomorphic local coordinate system on X, defined around the open neighborhood of a given point. Okay. And uh, suppose D be a simple normal crossing divisor on X, which is locally defined by the product Z1, Z2, Zd equal to zero. And let dj be the be the useful component of d, which is locally defined by zj equal to zero for each j equal to one two dot on d. Okay. And let omega one x log d uh, be the locally free coherency. Then uh, this logarithmic cotangent bundle omega one x log d. This is basically locally free coherency of OX modules uh, and its local sections, local free field. Uh, sorry, uh, frame field are given by dz1 by z1, comma dot dot dzd by zd, comma dzd plus one, and so on dzn. Okay, so these are locally defined uh, section which generates this uh, vector bundle. And let uh, E be a holomorphic vector bundle of rank R on X. And suppose we have give, we have given a logarithmic connection nebula from E to uh, e tensor omega 1 x log d, this is singular along the divisor d. And then we can uh, we can choose a holomorphic local frame field for e and then try to write down the matrix form of the logarithmic connection, okay, with respect to that local coordinate, local coordinate z1, z2, zn, and the local frame field, say s1, s2, sr of the vector bundle. Then if you uh, write down this local expression, then this nebula looks like nebula equal to rj times dzj by zj plus sj. Okay. Uh, where this rj r r cross r matrices matrix of locally defined holomorphic functions on x and this sj, this second part, these are r cross r matrix of locally defined logarithmic one forms uh, on x with simple pole uh, along the the union of the divisors d j, d i where i not equal to j. Okay, for each of this uh, irreducible component of this divisor d j, irreducible uh, component d j, we can write uh, local expression for nebula in this way. Right. Then this uh, this locally defined uh, these matrices r j, they glue together appropriately to define global endomorphism of the vector bundle over the divisor dj. Okay. And this global endomorphism over dj, uh, this is called the residue of this vector bundle, uh, residue of this connection nebula uh, along the 
Aerosol component DJ of the device. Okay. Now, <clears throat> suppose X is a smooth positive curve, that means in dimension one. And suppose we fix a reduce effective divisor. So uh, in dimension one, reduce effective divisor is basically a finite set of distinct close points, say x1, x2, xn, say xd on x. <coughs> then, uh, uh, then there is a theorem that uh, suppose E is a holomorphic vector bundle on X, and for each X belongs to D in this divisor, we fix a endomorphism AX. Okay. Then for any indecomposable holomorphic direct sum uh, F of the vector bundle E, we have that AX uh, send FX all the vectors of fx fx is uh, just uh, the fiber of the vector bundle vector bundle f at the point x then ax sent fx2 in, into fx for all x belongs to d and e admits a logarithm connection singular along d with uh, rigid residue so uh, i have uh, so there is a i have forgot to include this term terminology so here uh, ax must be rigid in the sense that this all this endomorphism of the fiber should commute with the all global endomorphism of the vector bundle E. Okay, then such a residue, such a local endo, uh, endomorphism of the fiber are called rigid endomorphism. Okay, so rigid means that it, it should commute with all global section of the endomorphism vector bundle of E. Okay, so then this residue, uh, suppose we, we are given, given rigid residue AX for each point, then E admits a logarithmic connection singular along the divisor D with uh, the prescribed residue AX at X belongs to D. If and only if each indecomposable direct sum F of E should satisfy degree F plus sum of trace of the restriction of this uh, rigid endomorphisms over the over the fiber of FX, uh, and then take take that their traces, then this equation should be equal to zero. Okay, so this is the necessary and sufficient condition. This vector model should satisfy to admit a logarithmic connection singular along the divisor D with prescribed rigid residue. So uh, it is also an interesting uh, question uh, whether we can remove this rigidity condition uh, or what are the uh, possibility means. Uh, if, if we take uh, uh, any endomorphism which is not necessarily rigid, can we say something uh, similar to that? So that is a question uh, that is not uh, yet addressed by anyone, I think. Okay, so next, let us uh, come to the case of principal G bundle. So any question up to that? Do you need to do not take this rigid endomorphism? What do you get? I mean, it's not an infinite object, but then the second second part you have any second, second part uh, here uh, residues are rigid. So we are taking fixed uh, rigid endomorphism AX. Okay, then uh, this if and only if statement holds. But I am saying that uh, without rigidity assumption, uh, we cannot say. Rigidity and both endomorphism and residue, or no, no, rigidity on the residues. So AX are rigid endomorphism. That means that this AX commutes with all global endomorphisms of E. Then we have we have this if and only statement. Okay, without rigidity assumption, uh, uh, I don't know whether this if and only condition holds or not. Actually, in our proof. We have used this rigidity assumption to derive this. No, no, I'm not talking about even only condition, but in one side, is there any division or nothing? Yeah, one side uh, we need. That means uh, when a when E admits a logarithmic connection with uh, residue AX, then we get this formula. Okay, but to prove the converse, yeah, use this rigidity assumption. Okay. No. 
So next, uh, in the case of principal G bundle, suppose suppose G be a connected complex Lie group, and let P maps E G to A X. This is a principal G bundle on X. Okay. Uh, so so basically, we are considering holomorphic principal G bundle unless it is written, but uh, we are we always assume that holomorphic principal bundle. Or if we work with algebraic variety, then algebraic principal bundle. Okay, and let uh, so then the differential of this uh, map projection map. This gives a hollow. This gives a vector bundle homomorphism from the tangent bundle. Uh, so differential gives a map from tangent bundle of E G to pullback of the tangent bundle of X, and it's commonly is called the relative tangent bundle of E G over X, and this is an exact sequence. And then <coughs> the G natural we have a G action on EG, which leads to a G action on the tangent bundle and the associated quotient bundle. The quotient is actually a holomorphic vector bundle or a libre vector bundle. This is called Atiya bundle. This is denoted by ATEG. Okay. This is basically a shape of, uh, uh, as a shift reading notion, this is a shape of uh, G invariant uh, vector fields on EG. So this is, uh, this is called Atiya bundle. And then, this, uh, if you uh, look at the G and variance, then this exact sequence reduced to the following exact sequence 0 to adjoint bundle of EG to Athea bundle of EG to Tx to 0. So we, we get exact sequence of Victor bundle like this, where adjoint bundle means that uh, on EG we have G action and G also acts on its Lie algebra. Okay. And then we go modular the action of uh, by this action. This is called the uh, adjoint bundle. So basically this is obtained by uh, extending, uh, so this curly, uh, this uh, small g, this is the Lie algebra. So this is also a g module. So using that g module homomorphism, we can extend, uh, we can uh, get a vector bundle from the principal g bundle EG, this called the adjoint bundle. Okay. So in case of G equal to GLN, this adjoint bundle is actually equal to endomorphism of the vector bundle. Okay. So this exact sequence is called Atiya exact sequence. Uh, so to study the uh, connection, so Atiya first uh, studied this kind of vector bundle, I think. So that's why uh, this is called Atiya exact sequence. So a holomorphic uh, connection on a principal G bundle EG, this is a uh, vector bundle, this is the homomorphism of vector bundles uh, from eta from Tx to Atiya bundle of Eg such that uh, e, such that it, it's composed with D prime P, this projection, this subjective map, this gives the identity on the tangent bundle. So that means a holomorphic connection on Eg is basically a uh, holomorphic or algebraic splitting of, that means OX linear splitting of this exact sequence. Okay. Now, this is a little different notion of the uh, connection defined in terms of Lindsay's rule for the case of vector bundles, but it turns out when G equal to GLN, this uh, to give a splitting uh, such as uh, waste linear splitting is equivalent to give a uh, connection with, uh, in the sense uh, we have defined earlier. That means a map from E to E tensor omega 1, omega one x satisfying the Leibniz rule and it is linear. So that definition is equivalent to splitting of this exact sequence in case of G equal, G equal to GLN. Okay. So, the, so now we, we modify this exact sequence uh, to define the notion of logarithmic connection. Okay. So sub, here D is a simple normal closing divisor on X and we have that uh, logarithmic tangent bundle Tx minus log D. This is the Tx minus log D. This is the dual log omega 1x log D we have discussed earlier. So this Tx minus log D, logarithmic tangent bundle, this is the subship of uh, this Tx. Okay. And then we take D prime P is this, this uh, subjective homomorphism and then take the pre-image pre of this uh, subship. Okay. Tx minus log D. So this inverse image is denoted by AD, uh, this curly AD EG. This is, uh, this we call logarithmic Atiya bundle of EG. 
and then its kernel is again the same that adjoint bundle and we get a short exact sequence of vector bundles 0 to adjoint bundle of eg to ad eg and then tx minus log b this is called logarithmic Atiya exact sequence of eg this is the appropriate modification of that previous exact sequence and uh, it turns out that a uh, when g equal to glnc a OX linear splitting of this exact sequence is same as the uh, logarithmic connection on the vector bundle as we have defined earlier. Okay. So, so for the case of principal bundle, uh, we define a logarithmic connection on EG single one along the device at D to be a OX linear homomorphism meter from TX minus log D to this logarithmic Atiyah bundle such that D prime P tilde composed with this eta this composition is identity on the tangent logarithmic tangent model on x okay so this is the remark i have just mentioned uh, now a logarithmic atia class <clears throat> so suppose we have uh, given this logarithmic atia exact sequence so this exact sequence defines a cohomology class say this is denoted by phi d of eg this is a cohomology class in the h1 of uh, x comma adjoint bundle of eg tensor with uh, the dual of this logarithmic tangent bundle which is omega 1 x log d right this exact sequence uh, splits even only this cohomology class is zero okay so there were to uh, talk about uh, some uh, existential criteria for uh, logarithmic connection on eg singular along d we just need to study when this uh, lo this atia, uh, logarithmic atia class, this uh, cohomology class vanishes, all right? So, EG admits a logarithmic connection singular along D, if and only this cohomology class is zero, right? Now, let's uh, see the notion of residue for holomorphic, uh, all, uh, for sorry, for logarithmic connection. So, we fix a holomorphic local coordinate system say z1 z2 zn on x around a point and let d be a simple normal crossing divisor on x which is locally defined by z1 z2 zd this product is equal to zero mm -hmm. and let dj be a irreducible component of d which is locally defined by zj equal to zero for each j equal to one to d and then this tx minus log d is locally free coherent sheep of OX modules, which is locally generated by these following sections. Z1 times del del Z1, comma dot dot, Zd times del del Zd, comma del del Zd plus one and del del Zn. Okay, these are generating section for this uh, Tx minus log D. Then we can identify Zj times del del Zj with one over this uh, particular divisor uh, universal component J, dj which is given by zj equal to zero then if we give this if we identify in this way then this identification turns out to be independent choice of local coordinate system such that uh, dj is given by zj equal to zero and then using this identification we can see that this tx minus log d is recited to dj is locally free OTZ module generated by their <coughs> Z1 del del Z1 comma dot dot Z J minus one del del Z J minus one and at Z position this is one because we have fixed an identification and then the rest of the generators are the same. Okay, so then using this identification we can get a injective homomorphism from a OTZ to T X uh, minus log D restricted to D J. And then suppose we have given a logarithmic connection Tx minus log D to uh, AD EG, Atiya bundle. This is the OX module homomorphism. So this, this is basically splitting. So given a such a logarithmic connection on EG, singular along D, then we compose with this injective homomorphism. And then we get a section of uh, the adjoint bundle. Then, then we get a map from this uh, odj to uh, this logarithmic atia bundle of eg right and it turns out that the image of this composed map actually lands inside the sub sub bundle adjoint bundle of eg restricted to dg okay this image 
this image defines a section. This section is uh, called a residue of this logarithmic connection in the case of principal one. So this is a residue of this connection, uh, logarithmic connection eta along the divisor dj. This is a global section of uh, adjoint bundle ratio to dj. Okay. So this is called residue of this uh, eta along dj for each. Now a proposition, they say that suppose each be a holomorphic vector bundle of rank R on X and E G L and C G L R C be the holomorphic frame bundle means the associated principal G L R C bundle uh, for E. Then eta uh, suppose we have given a logarithmic connection eta singular along the divisor T uh, on the principal G bundle G L N bundle G L R C bundle E. Then the and suppose nebula is the corresponding associated uh, logarithmic connection on the vector bundle E as singular along the divisor D. Then each aerosol component for each aerosol component DJ of the divisor D, uh, the no notion of the residue we have we have discussed for the case of vector bundle. This coincides with the notion of the residue we have dis we have just defined for the case of principal G GLNC bundle. Okay, so that means this uh, notion for the case of principal bundle is actually compatible with the previous definition of the notion of residue for the case of vector bundles, right? Now, uh, now we discuss uh, the notion of extension, uh, the cases, uh, what happens when we extend the structure group or reduce the structure group uh, of the principal bundle, what happens to the uh, logarithmic connection. Suppose F maps H to G be a homomorphism of connected complex Lie groups, and suppose DF is uh, the induced homomorphism of their Lie algebras from H to G. Right. And suppose uh, P be a homomorphic principal H bundle on X, then we can use this uh, homomorphism of complex Lie group to extend the structure group to get a principal G bundle, right? This is uh, denoted by EG, which is uh, EG cross uh, G O and go modular the action of twisted action of F on EG, uh, sorry, EH and G. So this is uh, this is the principal G bundle obtained by extension of the structure group of EH by F. Then this, uh, then we have the following two short exact sequence and the maps. Uh, which makes the diagram commutative. So we have the logarithmic RTX logarithmic sequence for EH and logarithmic RTX sequence for the EG. And we have a natural map from adjoint bundle of EH to adjoint bundle of EG and similarly for adjoint uh, RTA bundle of EH to RTA bundle of uh, EG. And, and these two maps make the following diagram, this diagram commutative. Okay. Now, this uh, homomorphism F from H to G, this gives a homomorphism of the cohomologies H1 uh, from X to adjoint bundle of EG is twisted with omega 1X log D to H1X comma adjoint bundle of EG is twisted with omega 1X log D, right? And clearly a splitting of this exercise gives the bottom exact sequence one can make so the proposition uh, next proposition says that with the above notion this eg admits a logarithmic connection singular along the divisor d if eh admits a logarithmic connection singular along d which is uh, which is quite clear from this commutative diagram, right? <laughs> because any splitting of the top exact sequence induces a splitting of the bottom exact sequence. So that's why. Right. But this converse hold, if uh, we can get, a, we, we can define a reverse uh, splitting. That is uh, that can be done if uh, the our homomorphism H to G. This is an injective homomorphism of connected affine algebraic group over C and H is reductive, right? Then uh, for reductive group, all uh, representation are completely aerosol, right? 
So using that information, we can uh, construct a uh, construct a splitting and uh, use uh, means I mean given a splitting on the bottom exit sequence, we can construct a splitting of the top exit sequence. So this gives a uh, uh, converse direction of this result. Right. <laughs> so now, uh, now we study the case when uh, when you can extend the, what happens uh, under the reduction of the structure group. Suppose G is an reductive affine algebraic group C and P be a parabolic subgroup of G. And let RUP be the unipotent radical of T. Then there is a closed connected algebraic subgroup L of P such so that the restriction of restriction to the subgroup L of the quotient homeopism P to the quotient P mod RUP, this is an uh, <coughs> Isomorphism of algebraic group over C. So such a uh, subgroup L is called Levy factor. This is generally this is a, actually a reductive algebraic subgroup, and this is called Levy factor of this parabolic subgroup P. Right. And suppose uh, this Q prime is basically the following composition map. You go by Q and then go by inverse of this uh, Q restricted to L inverse. Okay. So this is an isomorphism. So so we get a map uh, from P to L, okay. But L is a Levy factor of the family sum P. Now using this uh, homomorphism P to L, so we can extend the structure group of a given principal P bundle EP to get a principal L bundle. This is denoted by EL, okay. This is the associated principal L bundle uh, for the principal P bundle P of Obtained by the structure extension of the structure group by this homomorphism Q prime. Now the Lie <coughs> the Lie algebra of the unipotent radical. This is nilpotent Lie algebra, and uh, uh, nilpotent radical of this Lie algebra of the parabolic subgroup P. Now we have an action of P on the nilpotent radical. This Lie algebra N. This gives rise to a uh, holomorphic vector bundle uh, EPN, which is uh, EP cross uh, N, and go modular the action of P on EP and two shade action of uh, P on this nilpotent radical. This gives a uh, vector bundle whose fibers are isomorphic to the D algebra N. Okay. Now note that this vector bundle EPN. This is actually a sub bundle of the adjoint bundle of EP, right? And the associated quotient bundle, this adjoint bundle of EP mod uh, EPN, this is isomorphic to uh, this uh, EP, uh, this is isomorphic to the uh, EPL. EPL means uh, you consider the principal P bundle EP and go and take the cross product with uh, the Lie algebra of L. And go modulate the, the action of P on EP and the two sheet action of P on the Lie algebra L. Okay, so this this is again isomorphic to the adjoint bundle of E L, right? Where L is this Lie algebra of this Lie factor. Now, then this is the joint result with Sudarshan Gurjar. So there, in the paper, we have proved that uh, with the above notion. If we uh, consider that H1 of x, EPN tensor with omega 1x log d is equal to 0, if this cohomology class is 0, then EP admits a logarithmic connection singular along d whenever EL admits a logarithmic connection singular along L. Okay. Any question? If you have any question, so far. Okay, so next uh, I want to mention the following result. So now we consider the restriction theory for logarithmic connection. So this is uh, quite similar to the restriction theorem proved by Atiyah for a holomorphic case, means uh, the holomorphic connection 
for hollow wave vector bundle. So our setup is the following. Suppose X is smooth co connected complex projective variety of dimension at least three. And suppose we fix an embedding of X into the complex positive space CPN for some large n. Suppose DBA reduce effective divisor on X. Then EG admits a logarithmic connection singular along D, if and only if for some smooth hypersurface Xn of sufficiently large degree n. So that means we take Hn to be degree n hypersurface in CPN and take its intersection with X. So this we denote by Xn. This is a smooth, suppose this is uh, some sufficiently large degree smooth hypersurface inside X. Okay. Suppose we are assuming that uh, this hypersurface intersects the divisor D properly. That means uh, it intersects each of the prime uh, prime divisor uh, of this D uh, properly. That means its intersection has dimension uh, less than one of the dimension of the divisor. Okay. Then the principal G bundle, EG restricted to Xn uh, on Xn admits a logarithmic connection. Suppose, suppose we are assuming that this restriction, uh, this restricted principal bundle on Xn, this admits a logarithmic connection singular along Xn. Then the our original vector bundle, uh, sorry, principal G bundle EG admits a logarithmic connection singular along D. And this is if and only condition. That means EG admits a logarithmic connection singular along D, if and only for some smooth uh, hypersurface Xn of sufficiently large degree which intersects D properly, the restriction of EG on Xn, this admits a logarithmic connection singular along the device, along D intersection Xn. So this uh, proof of this theorem is also uh, uh, similar to the, means the idea is basically the same as the Athias proof of this uh, restriction theorem. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and it is, uh, uh, quite interesting and open question what happens for dimension two? That means when X is a smooth connected complex positive variety of dimension two in surface. So uh, that is, uh, that case is not known. Even there are some results by uh, Bishwash and uh, Sudarsh, uh, Sudarshan Burjar where they have studied that, uh, uh, they have constructed a counter example of a surface uh, where if we restrict uh, the vector bundle from the surface to any curve inside the surface, this admits a connection, but still over the surface, there is no connection on the vector bundle. So, yeah, so that's a problem. So we don't know what, what should be the right approach or what should be the right uh, criteria for the case of surface for a vector bundle to admit a holomorphic connection or lower connection. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, so that much I wanted to say. So if you have any question, you may ask. Hello. Yes. Uh, can you repeat your question? I could not hear properly. Are there any? You mentioned that uh, uh, only results were done over C I and mean, complex numbers. Yeah. I'm asking, are they true over uh, algebraically close fields or characteristics? Is there anything special about? Oh, no, no, no. Here, uh, all these uh, proofs actually works over algebraic closed field of characteristic zero. Okay. This last uh, result, G is any group or do you have any? Uh, uh, okay, so here G is reductive uh, uh, affine algebraic group. So, e.g., here G is uh, reductive affine algebraic group. Yeah, I forgot to mention. Do you have this result on the similar result for Victor Wonders? Is this the logarithmic connection? 
uh, I mean, that, uh, using this restriction. Restriction theorem. For uh, holomorphic connection, this similar theorem actually was proved by Atiyah. So we have uh, actually modified this proof. This uh, idea is quite similar. So Atiyah have proved the, this result for principal bundle, where G is reductive of an algebraic group. And we have modified uh, this uh, theorem for the case of logarithmic connection. And G is, G is reductive. No, uh, Whether similar result is known for Victor bundle or not? Yeah, so so we have not seen uh, any result before uh, of that of that kind of result before proving this one. So uh, here, if we take G equal to GLNC, then we get the case of vector bundle, logarithmic connection of vector bundles. So this result is slightly more general than the vector bundle case. So if we put G equal to GLNC, then we get back what you are asking. Any more question? So do you have any criteria uh, for existence of logarithmic connections? For principal bundles in terms of the residue, like in, in the Riemann surface case, for rigid residue, we have a if and only if criteria. Do you yeah. have any? Uh, do you have any such criteria for uh, uh, like yeah, logarithmic yeah. connections? Yeah. Or, uh, on higher dimensions. On higher dimension, no, I I don't know. But for compact Riemann surface, we have a paper with uh, Inuel research and. Uh, and Anandan and uh, Aridip Shah. Yeah, that you mentioned for rigid residues, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So on higher dimension, it's not known. Oh, on higher of... dimension, we don't know. For okay. higher dimension, for dimension greater than equal to three, this is a kind of criteria. Uh, and But this criteria yeah, but is then, not that much then, effective because we don't yes, know yes. what happens for the surface. So once uh, yes. we can find a criteria for the case of service, then with this result, we can get uh, some good hold on law the connection. Yeah, but then uh, even for four, say for four folds, you are reducing to a three fold case, right? Uh, by uh, using this it, result with good check. Yeah, but this is, uh, this is a complex dimension, not in real dimension. No, no, no. I'm saying that. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. In case of complex dimension so four, so we can reduce. We can uh, use this theorem. Suppose uh, for uh, when n is dimension, even dimension three. So suppose on for some high de high degree hypersurface, uh, smooth hypersurface X n embedded inside X. So this so that hypersurface is now a, a surface just dimension two right because x is mm -hmm. dimension three yes, yes yes suppose we know that uh, e admits a uh, eg admits a logarithmic connection on over xn then uh, singular along d intersection xn then we can say using this theorem we can say that eg admits a logarithmic connection on this the dimension three variety x so even under some strict condition on e the so if E is semi-stable uh, with vanishing discriminant or some special kind of vector bundles, uh, is it known uh, similar kind of result holds on surfaces? Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I have not seen any any kind of uh, this kind of result. What happens oh, okay. if okay. we put stability condition or not? I have not seen any such thing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay. Okay, if not, let's uh, thanks. Speaker again. No, thank you. Okay, let me stop sharing. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hello, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, can you share the screen? Test. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, we'll start uh, in 10 minutes. Okay. Sure. Okay, okay. Thanks.
Welcome everybody. The last talk of today's session. And so the last talk of RLs. And we have uh, showed up us from University of Haifa. We will talk about Higgs models on nodal curves. So now we will start. Okay. Thank you for inv inviting me. Um, so I'll, uh, sorry, this is working, yeah. Uh, so I'll start by uh, defining uh, normal crossing divisor, semi-stable degeneration, and uh, log cotangent bundle, log symplectic form, and Higgs bundle on curves. And in the second part, I will uh, recall some facts about moduli of Higgs bundle on smooth curves. Then I will uh, degenerate, uh, I will, uh, discuss a construction of a degeneration of this moduli space of Higgs bundles. Uh, then I, I will uh, talk about some log structures on this degeneration. And finally, I will uh, discuss uh, about the log tangent space of this uh, degeneration and a log symplectic form on it. So, okay. So, so the um, first definition is a simple normal crossing divisor. Let uh, X be a smooth variety. Uh, a divisor D is called a simple normal crossing divisor if it is union of a uh, bunch of smooth divisors such that every DI and DJ intersect transversely. So uh, an, an example is you can take this affine space A2, which is uh, C2. And uh, the divisor, you can take union of two hyperplanes or any one of them. Uh, in, in A3, also you can take uh, either one of them or uh, any union of any two uh, hyperplanes or a uh, union of all three of them. So these are examples of simple normal crossing divisors. Uh, a divisor D is called a normal crossing divisor if eta locally the divisor is simple uh, normal crossing divisor, which means that uh, there, there should exist a ethyl surjective map from a smooth variety from U to X, such that uh, this pullback of this divisor becomes a simple normal crossing divisor in this ethyl cover. Okay, so given this setup, uh, we can define what is called log cotangent bundle. It is a subsheaf of uh, meromorphic differential forms, which has logarithmic poles along D. So for uh, every open set V in X, uh, the sec sections of this sieve is uh, all those meromorphic forms alpha such that alpha and D alpha has simple poles along D. Uh, so a particular case, uh, as in our ex example, when X is uh, the affine space and D is a union of uh, first R hyperplanes, uh, coordinate hyperplanes, then uh, the um, omega one, uh, the, the log cotangent bundle is freely generated as OX module by, uh, so D log X, X1 up to D log XR, uh, because I have taken union of first are hyper hyperplanes and then the usual ones. Uh, you, you can find uh, more details about in uh, about it in this reference. Okay, so uh, next, what is a semi-stable degeneration? A semi-stable degeneration is a flat morphism from a smooth variety to a DVR, such that the generic fiber of this map is smooth and the special fiber is a normal crossing divisor in X, D. The, the special fiber is D, which is normal crossing divisor in X. So an, an ex example is, uh, looks like this. So this, this is my smooth variety X mapping to a DVR S. The generic fiber is smooth and the closed fiber is a normal crossing divisor in X. Okay, so uh, given a uh, uh, semi-stable degeneration, one can define relative log cotangent bundle to be quotient of 
the usual uh, uh, log cotangent bundle divided by uh, the pullback of log cotangent bundle of S. There you can so one one can check that uh, this is in, in fact a locally free C for a vector bundle. The restriction of this vector bundle to the normal crossing divisor D, which is special fiber, gives a, a vector bundle on the divisor. We call it the log cotangent bundle of the divisor, and we denote it by uh, omega one D log partial D. The dualizing sieve of D can be defined as follows. Uh, so remember this D is a, a variety with normal crossing singularities. So the dualizing sieve can be defined to be the determinant of this vector bundle, this restriction bundle. Uh, uh, reference is Friedman's paper fr from 1983. Okay, so what is a log symplectic form? Let X be a smooth variety and uh, D be a normal crossing divisor in X. A log symplectic form on X is, a, is, a, is an element of the second exterior power, power of this, which is closed and non-degenerate on the log tangent bundle now, which is the dual of the log cotangent bundle. So everything is, is defined with this log structure here. Okay, so given a sem semi-stable degeneration where D is the closed fiber, uh, one can define a relative log symplectic form on X over S to be an element of the second exterior power of relative log cotangent bundle, which is closed and non-degenerate on the relative tangent bundle, which is dual. No, sorry, relative log tangent bundle. A log symplectic form on the normal crossing divisor, which is special fiber, is an element of uh, the second exterior power of this restriction bundle, which is closed and non-degenerate on uh, the uh, log tangent bundle of the divisor. Okay, so uh, there are uh, so it is very well known that if X is a smooth variety, then the cotangent bundle uh, comes equipped with a natural uh, symplectic form. Sim the similar proof works and one can show that given a semi-stable degeneration, there exists a relative log symplectic form on the relative uh, log cotangent bundle. But uh, the second one uh, may not be unique. There are other natural forms uh, other other natural relative log simplicity form on x which can be found in this reference okay so next we define a higgs bundle on a, a smooth curve or nodal curve uh, a, a nodal curve c is a curve with finitely many nodes that is points x1 x2 xn finitely many points such that the analytic local ring of the curve at that point should be uh, C T1 comma T2 modulo T1 into T2 for every node. So uh, the analytic local picture of around every node should look like our, our first example, the union of two hyperplanes in, in A2. A Higgs bundle on a uh, nodal curve is, is a pair of, of a vector bundle on C and phi is, a, a phi, phi is any bundle homomorphism from E to E tensor omega C, where omega C uh, denotes the dualizing uh, C of C. Okay, so uh, Next, I will uh, recall some facts about uh, modular space of Higgs bundle on smooth curves. Let us look at the functors. FVB denotes the functor of uh, vector bundles and FHB denotes the functor of Higgs bundles, which sends uh, any scheme T to uh, isomorphism classes of families of vector bundle on X cross T of some fixed rank R and degree D. 
um, so one can immediately see from the definition that there is exist an uh, obvious uh, forgetful uh, map from uh, the functor FHP to FEB, which just forgets the Higgs field. And the map uh, other way around, which is uh, given any vector bundle, it sends to the Higgs bundle with zero Higgs field, the zero bundle homomorphism. And one can check that uh, Z compose F is uh, the identity transformation on, uh, on, the, on, on this functor. So we will discuss that this, this map between functor is, is like a cotangent bundle map. And this, this Z map is like the zero section of this cotangent bundle map. Okay, to, to check that we have to compute uh, the, the uh, tangent space uh, of, the, of this functor. So uh, the tangent space of the functor FVB at a point E is uh, Mm, all spec k epsilon valued points of this functor, which is uh, which which can be shown to be h one of end of e. Uh, therefore, the cotangent space of the functor FVB at a point uh, e is isomorphic to the dual of this vector space, which is uh, all all Higgs field on the given functor. Oh, so sorry, on the given bundle. So in uh, therefore, info, informally speaking, the forgetful functor. So, if you fix a vector bundle, uh, the the phi fiber is basically uh, all uh, the phi, fiber is the cotangent bundle at at that given vector bundle. So, it is actually like the cotangent bundle map, and Z is the zero section. So, we'll now first uh, look at this proof. So uh, the uh, tangent space of the modular space of a vector bundle at a given vector bundle is all uh, isomorphism classes of families of vector bundle on X cross spec K epsilon with a fixed closed fiber E. So if you write out this family on a suitable open cover of X, the first order deformation of the bundle is given by Aij plus epsilon Bij, where Aij is the original transition functions of uh, E, and Bij uh, should be given uh, should be of uh, of, the, of this form, such that uh, uh, this co-cycle should uh, define some uh, should satisfy some condition, um, which is uh, uh, Cij times Cjk equal to Cik. And that condition exactly gives this. And from uh, you using this condition, one can see that the uh, this Aij and Bij defines an element of H one of X comma and E. So this data is exactly equivalent to giving a, a one one cycle of end and E. So there therefore the tangent space at the given point E is H1 of X comma and E. So next we uh, discuss about the tangent space of the modular space of Higgs bundle. So it, it should be uh, deformation of this given Higgs, Higgs bundle. So intuitively it, sh it should have two parts, deformation of the bundle and deformation of the Higgs field, and they should be compatible in some sense. So on a suitable uh, uh, affine cover, the deformation uh, of the bundle should be as, as we have discussed before. And the deformation of the Higgs field is given by the original Higgs field phi plus some epsilon times SI where SI uh, are, the, are some local Higgs fields. And uh, since they have to define a global Higgs field on X cross spec K epsilon, so they should uh, satisfy the uh, satisfy some condition, and that condition is precisely this. And uh, one can show that giving such a data is equivalent to giving an element of uh, the first hypercohomology of the following uh, complex of vector bundles. So we have uh, given. Uh, a vector bundle with a Higgs field, I can take end E and given any section of ND, I can take bracket with phi and get an element here. So this bracketing with phi 
figures out here. Okay. So therefore, uh, the tangent space at a given Higgs bundle is isomorphic to the first hyper cohomology of this complex. Description of the symplectic form. Uh, so the reference can be found in this pap papers. Uh, the sim symplectic pairing, pairing can be uh, described as follows, if you want to read out. This is the tangent space, so it has, has to be a pairing like this. Um, by said duality, one can check that uh, this is isomorphic to C. The key point, the key point here is the complex uh, that, that we have discussed about C, C bullet is self-dual. There is a um, way, way to take dual of complexes and one can check that uh, this is uh, isomorphic to itself. And by growth endic duality, one can check that uh, the, hype, the first hyper cohomology is self dual. So, which means that um, this pairing is non degenerate because this is the exactly the same, same pairing. So, only one, um, only one thing I haven't uh, described it, what uh, described is what is this map? So this map, uh, to see this, see, see this map, one can take the tensor product of the um, complex with itself. And then there is this natural trace map here, which defines this map. So this is the key point, I think, uh, behind the symplectic pairing on modular space of Higgs bundle. Okay, so next I want to discuss about Hitchin map. Uh, the as I said that the mod moduli functor of the Higgs bundle uh, of the Higgs bundle is uh, like the cotangent bundle of the moduli functor of vector bundles. So therefore, it is obvious that the moduli of Higgs bundle cannot be proper. But there is a proper map on the moduli space to an affine space, which can be described as follows. So um, a, a vector bundle is like a family of vector space and a Higgs field is a family of uh, linear map between vector spaces. So one, one can talk about family of character, uh, characteristic polynomial, which is precisely this map. Hitchin proved that uh, this um, map is proper. It's an important feature of this moduli space. Next, I'll uh, talk about uh, degeneration of moduli of vector bundles and Higgs bundles. So the setup is we, we fix a flat family of curves over a DVR such that uh, the family is regular over, or smooth over C. The generic fiber is a smooth curve and closed fiber X naught is a single nodal, uh, a nodal curve with single node. So the picture is like this. The, this is the picture. Okay, so uh, so next I I will uh, define a, a relative mod moduli functor which takes a scheme over S the given DVR and sends uh, to uh, isomorphism classes of vector bundles or Higgs bundles uh, of rank R and degree D on on this variety. So basically we are looking on, uh, looking for uh, families of vector bundle on this, uh, on the, on, on, on this surface and it's pulled back. So one can uh, construct uh, the relative moduli space similarly, but uh, uh, the prob uh, the positive points are uh, that the modelized functors are represented by smooth varieties uh, when rank and degree are co prime, and it uh, gives a flat degeneration of moduli of vector bundles or Higgs bundle on smooth curves. But the problem is that uh, this functor FVB over S is not proper, and uh, the Hitchin map on this functor is not proper. 
so to see that so we can start with uh, any any vector bundle on the generic fiber and one can show that uh, it can only extends to a torsion free sieve in general it, it may not extend to a vector bundle similarly it uh, um, so given a higgs bundle it may not be may not extend to a uh, locally free higgs bundle but a uh, torsion free sieve with a map from f to f tensor omega c so therefore the hitchin map uh, the hitchin map on on this functor uh, also also cannot be proper so therefore uh, we we want to comp compactify the model this relative model space and the hitchin map on on this model space so we have to introduce some new objects in the moduli so these are uh, works of Gisekar, Nagara Sesadri, and Balaji, Barik, and Nagaraj. So let uh, so I'll now thoroughly define the objects. Let X be uh, a nodal curve with uh, only one node. A Gisekar Higgs bundle of rank n and degree d is a triple where uh, XR um, is uh, a semi stable model of the given nodal curve. Uh, uh, that is, uh, this XR is obtained by replacing this node with the with the, with a chain of P1s of length R. So, so we we have this nodal curve. We take its normalization and we insert a chain of P1 of length R along these two nodes. If there are exactly R P1s, we call it XR, and the contraction map to by pi R. Uh, so a, a vector bundle on this curve. So is this e is is a vector bundle now on this curve, on this modification, which should have the following property. So if you restrict this vector bundle to any of the p1, let's call it r1, r2, r, 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 r i. If you restrict e to r i, then it should be of the form o. o Mm, summed up to ai and o1 summed up to bi but bi should be positive integer for all all i and the second condition it should satisfy is that the push forward of this vector bundle should be a torsion free sieve on this nodal curve so if a vector bundle satisfies satis satisfies these two condition then we we call it a, um, a Gisekar vector bundle or uh, admissible vector bundle. The third uh, ob object fee is uh, any any vector vector bundle homomorphism from E to E tensor um, omega omega XR. The dualizing C for the modification curve modified curve so this is these are the objects that we want to include in the boundary so next we define the functor of these objects um, fghp gisegar higgs bundle over s which uh, takes a scheme t and gives equivalence classes of gisegar higgs bundles over t so we have to talk about this equivalence classes. These are not uh, the uh, or the ordinary is isomorphism classes of families. Two Gisekar Higgs bundles are said to be equivalent if there exists an automorphism of this modification, which fixes the nodal curve X naught, such that sigma upper star E1 uh, after, after pulling back uh, via um, this automorphism, uh, it can become is isomorphic with E2 and after pulling back um, via phi, sorry, sigma, phi1 can become e equal to phi2. So notice that uh, the e equivalence class is uh, stronger than the usual is isomorphism class. So, uh, so uh, yes. Uh, yes. Right. So, uh, 
so if uh, i am working with rank and case so so i have i am so for uh, discussing the moduli functor i have to fix some rank n and degree d uh, uh, so when when i am discussing about rank n case this r can vary from 0 to n 0 is the original nodal curve that we had started with and it it can go up to xn so in the so, moduli functor is all this it's not to xn is equal not just Sorry, can you can you please say uh, that? Functor, so this is the visitor expanded over x not to extent or all 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 of them will act, appear. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So next to, to see what kind of uh, sing, singular, so we, we, uh, I, I want to say that, so after uh, in, introducing uh, these objects in the boundary, the, the, the special fiber or the, or the boundary be, becomes uh, a variety with normal crossing singularity. So to, to show that we need to consider this functor, which is functor of Giesecker curves or modifications over rt in local schemes over s so which gives given any t uh, mapping to s which is rt in local scheme uh, it gives isomorphism classes of Giesecker curves over t or thicken uh, which 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 are thickening of this closed fiber of a fixed xn so it should be r here xr okay let's um, go ahead with the X, xn then uh, Gisekar and Nag Nagra Sesadri showed that uh, this functor has, has a versal family, uh, which is um, is isomorphic to spec of C, Z1, Z2, Zn plus 1. And in this case, A, C is spec of CT. Uh, or, um, and this versal family is deformation spaces of this fixed curve. And also there, there, there exists a universal family on, uh, on this versal space. So in particular, uh, from, the, from, from this description, one can see that, that uh, since this functor is represented by, uh, or the com completion of this functor is re represented by this variety, that FGC uh, over S is formally smooth over C, and when T equal to zero, uh, it defines a normal crossing divisor in this variety. Moreover, if we uh, restrict this curve to any uh, coordinate hyperplane or ith, ith coordinate hy hyperplane hi, then one can see that uh, this curve is basically smoothening of the ith node of the fixed curve xn. In other words, the uh, equation of the ith node is given by the e equation of the ith hy hyperplane z i equal to zero. Okay, so using this, uh, Gisekar and Nagras Esadri and Balaji Barik Nagras, they showed that the forgetful morphism from the original functor to this uh, uh, functor is for formally smooth, and therefore. Uh, all the, all the sing singularities of this functor um, is is the same as sing singularities of this. So therefore, the special fiber uh, of MGHB is is a normal crossing divisor, and hence uh, it gives us semi-stable degeneration of the moduli of Higgs bundle. They also show that the Hitchin the naturally Hitchin map on MGHB is proper. Okay, so uh, next I will uh, define uh, natural log structures on this uh, degeneration. So, so a, a log structure on, on a scheme uh, in, encodes exactly the data of a normal crossing divisor. So it, it is a triple a scheme, uh, etal sif of monoid M, and alpha is an uh, is a morphism of sieves of monoids 
such that the the induced morphism on alpha inverse ox star to ox star is an isomorphism which means that the uh, the sif of unit should um, be a sub sif of this uh, this ethyl sif of monoids um, okay uh, a chart for a log scheme is a single monoid p with a map of sieves of monoid this is constant sieve of monoids given by this monoid p uh, a chart is a, a uh, a map of sieves of monoids px to m which induces an isomorphism between the associated log structures so basically the the log structure locally should be given by the constant sieve of this monoid so we'll, we'll see ex ex examples of this a morphism between log schemes is a pair f f sharp and f flat where f and f sharp is the or the ordinary morphism of schemes and f flat is a morphism of sieves of monoids which should be compatible with other morphisms a chart for a morphism of log schemes is uh, consists of a pair of charts for each one of them uh, which is also which should be compatible with the log morphism f Okay, uh, first example is uh, let X be a smooth variety and D be a normal crossing divisor. We, we, we take the com complement of D, then any ethyl open set V in for any ethyl open set V in X, we mm, define this sieve MV to be all uh, functions on V which are unit outside this D. One can show that this is a sieve of monoids and the map alpha is obvious in inclusion and that x m alpha is a log scheme so to uh, see what, what is the chart let uh, let us take a point which belongs to uh, intersection of exactly r number of local components of d then the chart is given by uh, end n to the power r to a map to um, x x1 x2 xc x x1 x2 xn sending the ith generator to xi okay the second ex ex example is a uh, theorem of mochizuki and kato let a, x be a flat family of pre stable curves which is connected nodal curves then any uh, then there there exists a natural log structure on x a log structure on on the base s and a log morphism from x to s such that the underlying morphism of ordinary schemes is same as f so it it can be found in this uh, reference i will uh, briefly uh, describe the log structure induced log structure on the base because i don't need uh, the need to discuss on x so uh, let a, 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 a s be a point such that x s the fi fiber of the of, the, of this map uh, is a nodal curve with nodes p1 p2 pn plus 1 the henselian local ring of uh, the no. total family huh? sorry previous sorry previous week. yeah yeah. So this AS is uh, the spec of DBR or any? Any, any, any variety. Yeah. Any variety. Okay. Yeah. In, 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 in fact, you can take a AS to be spec of C also, like a single point. So currently, that every, I mean, every uh, variety has a log, log structure. Mm, yes, if you can uh, give a uh, yes, yes, that that I th I think what what you are thinking is correct. So if you can um, give a family of nodal curves on it, you are saying that it gets a log structure, right? Yeah. So it, this de definition of log structure is not necessarily given by a divisor. So it is more than that. 
so it is just in some some et ethyl sip of monoid on on s it doesn't have to have to come from a normal crossing divisor that is the okay yeah okay so we we take a clo um, close point of s uh, be a point such that xs is a nodal curve with nodes p1 p2 pn plus 1 Uh, since it is a not fa family of nodal curve the henselian local ring of x at at this node should look like this uh, a, a a is the local ring of s at this point s and uh, the lo henselian local ring of the total family should look like a uh, x comma y modulo xy time uh, minus ti where ti is some element of the maximal ideal of s at at this point then the log structure at s is uh, pulls out of n plus 1 log structures or uh, sip of monoids uh, each one one of them comes from one of the nodes so there are n plus 1 nodes so it is pulls out of n plus 1 sip of monoids where ni uh, comes from the ith node and it is defined as follows so n uh, so ni is the chart of n ni is given by a map from n to a which sends the generator to ti this equation so basically the log structure on the base is defined by the i uh, equation of the i th node and uh, ni can be thought of as the log structure due to the node uh, pi and um, then um, this um, every, every one of them contains the sip of units so you can take push out along oxx star that is the log structure on the base so one can see if if s is just a point and then uh, since there there is no maximal ideal all this ti has to be zero so uh, it is just given by uh, this generator going to zero some n n to the power n plus 1 map mapping to a such that all the generators are mapping to zero okay so there are two log structure uh, on the moduli space of uh, higgs higgs bundles first one is given by the universal curve uh, um, Uh, universal curve and which which is the second example and the second one is given by the first example which is the uh, given by the normal crossing divisor or the special fiber so we'll discuss that uh, these two log structures are is isomorphic so recall that we have this relative picture this is our relative moduli space over s and c univ is the universal curve let xn if e be a gesegger higgs bundle it is not difficult to see that there are n plus 1 components which pass through this point notice that this curve xn has also n plus 1 nodes so if there are n p1s then there are n plus 1 nodes so the number of local components and of the of this moduli space and number of nodes of xn are same to prove that the two log structures are the same it is en enough to show that the local e equation of the nodes and the local e equations of the components are the same it, it is enough to do this checking on the an analytic local ring at the point and hence on the virtual deformation space of the curve because there there is a formally smooth map from one to the other on the virtual deformation space the result follows from the construction of the virtual family so this is the thing we need that uh, the equation of the ith node is precisely the equation of the ith hyperplane so therefore the two log structures are same so finally uh finally i uh, talk about log log tangent space of the relative moduli space 
so before that i have to talk about log tangent space let x comma m comma alpha be a log scheme and x be any closed point then uh, i have this in, it's it's a closed point so it is given by a incl inclusion map to x so x has a ethyl c four monoid m we can pull it back via this map so it defines a log structure on spec k the point we okay. denote this sorry uh, can go on to the two slides back. Uh, I saw the log structure. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, the map you are taking an internally explicit map, so you are checking it locally, right? So, what is the map? No, we, do, we, we don't need the map because uh, both of these log structure or the C4 monoids, they are sub C4 monoids of OX. Okay, so so it, it is enough to check like uh, two sub modules of of a same module. So the both of the C four monoids are sub C four monoids of uh, the OX the the structure C. So therefore, locally check checking that the they are same is enough. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. So okay, the log tangent space. Uh, so we we st we start with a point. We have a log struct uh, in C four monoids on X. We can pull it back. We denote this log structure on uh, the closed point by X comma M X comma alpha X. Okay. This is the pullback log structure on a closed point. Uh, so now uh, there, there is an obvious inclusion of this close point inside spec of K of epsilon. Uh, it induces a log structure on spec of K epsilon by composition. So X upper star M we have, so X upper star M is just this MX. And there, there is a map alpha. So I can take the composite map. So that, that is a log structure on K epsilon. So let us denote this log scheme by spec k epsilon, m epsilon, alpha, 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 alpha epsilon. <laughs> so then the log tangent space is defined to be the space of log morphism from, so log tangent space at, the, at that given point is defined to be the space of log morphism from uh, this log scheme to the given log scheme. So the ordinary tangent space is, all, all the maps from spec k epsilon to x, but now we have to collect all the log morphisms. So to un un understand this de definition, uh, one can use uh, what is called a classifying log stack. So let us fix a fine log scheme S comma L. Uh, fine means this. Um, so one can, so this is like a, a target space. One can define a fiber category uh, of, of our schemes, uh, log S comma L as follows. The objects of log, uh, log SL are morphisms uh, from log schemes to this fixed target. So it is classifying uh, stack for all the mor morphism uh, to this fixed target. Um, Morphism in this category is uh, uh, isomorphism of log schemes over SL. So also also prove that log SL is an alg algebraic stack or uh, locally of finite presentation over S. The, uh, the useful pro properties of this classifying log stacks are giving a log morphism between a fine log scheme XM to SL is equivalent to giving a morphism or ordinary morphism of stacks from X to log SL. And uh, the, the relative uh, log tangent space of this map is ordinary tangent space uh, or ordinary relative tangent space of this map. 
and this follows from just the definition that we have discussed it is the same thing as as this so there therefore we see that uh, there there is a map from our uh, um, relative modelized space to log sl where s is the tvr and l l l is the log structure induced uh, by the closed point of s so we have to compute to com compute the relative log tangent space we have to compute just the ordinary ten relative tangent space of, of this map but then uh, since there are there are uh, there are log smooth varieties we we can focus on the closed point itself so this s is the closed point of s we just want to compute this where s is the closed point and s upper star l denotes the pullback log structure so it can be uh, so this is our log tangent relative log tangent space so any any uh, yeah any any Gisecker Higgs bundle gives me a point here by Mochizuki's method, and then we can look at the map here. And if we take a infinitesimal deformation of that uh, given Gisecker Higgs bundle, it gives me a point here. I can uh, look at this differential map. And the fiber product is basically an element here and an element here, which map, maps to the same object. So the relative tangent space of our modelized space over uh, S at a given Gisecker Higgs, Higgs bundle is isomorphic to the fiber product of the right vertical map over a given point of this stack given by the uh, given um, Gisecker Higgs bundle. Okay, so we have to see uh, what are these two maps. So as 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 I have described that given a, a given a Gisecker Higgs bundle of over spec K, the the log structure on spec K is given by all all of them should be you know, all the generators should go to zero. So this is the chart of the log structure, and this is the Im image here in the log k epsilon, k epsilon value point. So uh, this is the horizontal map and now we have to talk about the vertical map. So vertical map, we have to start with a uh, arbitrary uh, infinitesimal deformation of this family, uh, of, the, of this uh, Gisecker Higgs bundle. Um, so uh, which, which is uh, deformation of this uh, Gisecker Higgs bundle, so XR is a thickening of uh, this given Gisecker curve XR. So it has exactly R plus one nodes. The Henselian local ring at the node PI uh, should look like this where lambda is some complex number. And if we uh, follow Mochizuki's method, then uh, uh, the, uh, the chart is given by all the all this EI should go to epsilon times lambda i. So therefore, by equating the log structures in step one and step two, one can conclude that the infinitesimal deformation this of this is is an element of the fiber product here. If all the lambda i's are zero for all i from uh, one one from r plus one. So all the lambda are zero. So therefore, from the description, one can see that around the node, the deformations are locally trivial. Only these are allowed in the fiber product. So next lemma is that such deformations are all trivial, which means that X epsilon is isomorphic to XR times spec K epsilon. The space of first order deformations of XR is isomorphic to X1 of omega XR, uh, OXR. Uh, there exists a um, short exact sequence between the global deformation space to 
local deformation space of the nodes. And since this is the map which sends uh, deformation to lambda i, since all lambda i's are zero, it follows that it, it belongs to here. And this is precisely the locally trivial deformations. Now, uh, since by definition of the uh, functor MGHP over S, X epsilon also comes equipped with a modification map to X naught cross pe epsilon. It, it comes with, with a map, it's not alone. So uh, X, X naught is, is our original nodal curve. And by local calculation, one can show that it is only possible when it, it is uh, itself trivial globally. Okay, so this means that uh, the elements of the fiber product here are deformations of this pair or this pair, which are not deforming the curve at all. So it is deformation of a vector bundle uh, with uh, with fixed on a fixed curve. So it should be is isomorphic to H one of X R comma N D, and similarly. The, the relative log time in space at a given Gisiger Higgs bundle is isomorphic to the first hypercohomology of the complex uh, defined by this Higgs bundle, which is this, uh, as, as we have discussed before. The relative symplectic structure, uh, log, log symplectic structure or appearing on uh, the um, relative log tangent space is um, the same same as before the key points are that the complex uh, c dot c bullet is again self dual and uh, the second key point is that the relative brothendic duality holds for families of nodal curves not only smooth curves but they hold hold for families of nodal curve from which it follows that this uh, the first hyper hypercohomology of the complex is dual to itself, self-dual. So therefore, this pairing is also non-degenerate. Non, non so there, therefore, uh, we, we get a relative log symplectic form. So, if, so this is the main point that I, I want to em emphasize. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Since uh, there are no questions, let's start the solo again. Thank you very much. So, a very good evening to all the speakers, to all the participants, and Professor Kalman. Uh, it has been very intensive six days, and now we are going to close uh, to conclude our uh, conference. So, to begin with that, I would like to invite Professor Kalman to give his closing remarks. Professor Kalman? Yes, just give me a minute. Sure, Dear participants and the invited speakers, 
It gives me great pleasure today to stand before you and to make some closing remarks. We are all happy to find that this international conference on some topics in algebraic geometry and commutative algebra is now conducted successfully for the past six days. The credit for this goes mainly to you, to you, the speakers and the active participants. Now, I'm talking to you in my capacity as the head of this mathematics department has organized this conference. Our university, namely SRM University AP, is a very young university, just four years old, that has ambitions to become excellent. We are requesting you to help us in achieving this excellence. You have already favored us by accepting our invitation and by actively contributing to the success of this conference. We would like you, we would like to be further benefited from your expertise. I'm now extending an open invitation to all experts like you to join our department in whatever way possible. Say, as a visiting professor or as an adjunct professor or as a professor spending your sabbatical leave period here or as a regular professor for a short or for a long period or in whatever capacity that suits you. Ours is a private university and this university has been generous with no hesitation to invest more funds and to make really attractive payments, remuneration to experts like you. As and when you think it is possible, please write to me or to any of your friends in our department. I'm looking forward to your becoming a colleague of us. Now, I request the organizers of the conference to propose a formal vote of thanks. Thank you. Now I would like to invite Dr. Sajadari to uh, hear for your thanks. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> So this first time I am saying, I have written this a lot of thanks. So I may forget somebody's name because of that I have written. So I'm just, I will just read out this name or that. So we hope you all have enjoyed this conference thoroughly and you'll stay with us. It is, it is a great pleasure for me to give a vote of thanks to all those who helped with this conference. This would not have been possible without, without our university's generous contribution. So I would like to thank our university for giving us the opportunity to host this conference in such a short time frame. I would like to thank all the invited speakers for the informative talks, for the, for the chairs for conducting the session so smoothly. I would like to thank the ITKM people of our university for their technical support and for, their, uh, for conducting all the Zoom session smoothly. Uh, spe special mention, Mr. Niranjan, Niranjan and Mr. So uh, Mr. Sota and Ravi for their constant support in, in conducting the conference. Please give them a big hand for their help. I would like to thank Mr. Rajoy Kutna, he is not with us here, for taking care of all the travel arrangement needed for the conference. I express my sincere gratitude to the ITKM department, Gonga Hostel Manager. Especially, especially here, I would mention 
Mr. Venkata Chalam, the CLM director, for making our life easy for this conference. I would like to thank our department and colleagues for their support in organizing this event and ensuring that it ran smoothly. Especially, I would like to thank uh, my colleagues, Rodhne Ranjana, for taking uh, for doing the maximum job for conducting this conference. So here I must mention that the idea of this conference came from Suratno. So I request all of you to give a big round of applause. I also note that we would like to have many more similar events in our university in the near future. As our vice chancellor and pro vice chancellor mentioned, and today our professor Kandan also mentioned that, it's our university, it's a very young university. And so I, I understood because all the speaker colleagues and the participants for your support, suggestion to make this university a good place for mathematics. I want to, to we want to make our department a mathematically active department. So your suggestion feedback will always be appreciated. Finally, last but not the least, I express my sense of gratitude to all the participants for making this conference a successful one. So we thank you once again for your active participation and wish you a happy onward journey. Okay, so in your future, we hope to see you all. Have a nice evening. And one, yeah, one last uh, announcement that slides and videos will be uploaded on the conference website. So, see you all. Sir Aditya. So, thank you for your time. Sir. Okay, so by saying this, we are concluding this conference.